I think that self affirmations are BS Mm -hmm. in so many ways. Self confidence doesn't come from shouting affirmations in the mirror. Right. Self confidence comes from having a stack of undeniable proof that you are who you say you are. You have to outwork your self doubt. Yeah. So what I did in that moment as I'm looking at who this person said I was, I wrote down 25 things that prove to me and anyone who knows me that I am who I say I am. Oh, that gives me chills. Welcome, beautiful people, and thank you for joining us on Till the Wheels Fall Off, a podcast by Two Folk Couple. I'm Matt. And I'm Paige. And we're here to inspire others, to bring you guys into our lives and tell you a little bit about our journey. Over 20 years together, we've learned a few things. We're going to work toward being the best version of yourself possible. We're going to dig into building a positive mindset, discuss mental health, addiction recovery, improving fitness, building businesses, and insight into what it takes to navigate life today. Welcome back. Welcome back. To another episode of Till the Wheels Fall Off. I'm Matt. I'm Paige. And a friendly reminder again, if you haven't already, please, if you've enjoyed the show, follow us. We'd really, really appreciate it. It helps the show grow. It moves us to the top of the list when people search things like this so that we can help more people and you can help us do that. You can assist us in our mission to help as many people as possible and it goes a long, long way. Uh, also, if you don't already and you like to watch people talk, check us out on YouTube. We are on YouTube uh, on our Instagram page at tufo underscore couple. You can find the link tree that has all of the links for all the things. We are on all the things now. Okay. <laughs> I, I was going to give our website. <laughs> I thought you were going to add something there. Because our website has all of the links. Okay. Quick update. <laughs> quick update. Um it's till the wheels fall off, right? Me and you till the wheels fall off. Yeah. Or until I burn the mother effing house down. That was very close. Which I almost just did right before we recorded this. Yes. We, we stuck some new lights in here I because the last ones are super yellow. Yeah. And I was adjusting something and the next thing I know there's sparks flying at my face <laughs> and the whole house goes power down. Well, you're lucky you didn't electrocute yourself because you know you're not an electrician and you were messing with electricity while the lights were on. It's changing a light bulb, man. I thought you were supposed to turn off the power or at least turn the lights off when you're changing the light bulb. No, there was a weird wire that got crimped up there. I don't know what happened, man, but that was sketchy. I repaired it, which is also sketchy, Yeah, but we're going to be fine. I'm glad you're still alive, dear. I'm glad the circuit breaker works. Yeah. Okay, so what is new with us? It's been a crazy last week. I feel like we haven't even had a chance to breathe. No, we haven't. Even it was busy, super busy, and great things happened. It's kids' sports season, and so that already wipes out a good chunk of time mm-hmm. that we've got. Most but of our it evenings was are your done. sober day because you've been was sober awesome. for 10 years. Yeah, April and then 13th. Right after that was your birthday, which is kind of cool that he has those two days back to back because we get to like sub- celebrate him double. It was not cool back in 2013 when I woke up and it was my 27th birthday and I was in rehab. Yeah, that's true. And I don't even think I got to talk to you that day. Yeah, we did. Or maybe I did. Or is that it, when I went up there? Yeah, I was on blackout, which is the means they, they don't let you talk on the phone like your first 10 days in treatment or something like that. Right. But they let me talk to you. I want to say you had to bring me something. No, I, didn't I had have to, a bag. I had to bring you something and you weaseled your way into the office. No, they told me you were in there and they said, I'm not looking. I'm going to go out here for just a moment. Your wife may or may not be in the next room. Wink, oh, okay. Wink. So they helped you go yeah, in there. Wink, wink. And then I walked in there. It didn't, was cool, Didn't someone though. give me hell for that though? Oh, I, I think someone know. did. I think Elise someone was did. like, I think someone was like, that's conniving behavior. I'm like, what, what the, I don't know. Yeah. It was, well, they it were was wrong. such a map move though. And it was great to be able to see you. They were wrong. Yeah. So last week was super eventful and it was super fun. Um, good friend of ours, I guess of mine really. Uh, he's a friend of yours too, though. We had a, a joint birthday party, which I never really do birthday parties ever. No, uh-uh. Never been a thing. Never really celebrated my birthday, but he's like, Hey, let's get together. His restaurant. We shut it down. We had some friends together and it was just, it was awesome. It was awesome. It was really chill. And nice to get out and hang out with people. Yeah. It was it was greatness. This last week has just been like a 
blur almost. It's just been super busy. Yes, my HSP was very high throughout this time. You yeah, know, you didn't handle HSP all this too is, well. I'm a highly sensitive person. So when I get overwhelmed with schedules and people and emotions and things happening, I'm like, I need some time to recharge. So I think I went to bed at like 8 o'clock on Saturday night. You did. And I slept until about 10 and then I went back to sleep. And it was a nice recharge, but something about that HSP just kind of gets in there. Yeah, you get overstimulated very easily. I do. Some of you may relate to this. Right. If you're listening to this, there's a good chance you might be HSP as well. Yeah, and I can handle it better now, but I have more coping, you know, mechanisms and stuff. But still, it's been it's been an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> it's been a little wild, man. It's been a little wild. So um we never run dry for content. In the background we are always working on something. We are always digging into one topic or another. And in the background, we are plugging away at this community that we're building. Yeah. Super excited to launch this thing. Should be imminent. Eventually. Be very soon. <laughs> I would say in the next couple of weeks, this thing is live and it's go. Yeah. And it's going to be a great place for listeners to get together and talk amongst each other as well as interact with us on things that you're working through. Like the entire goal when we started this was like, let's Let's help people through our journey. Let's teach people what we've learned. And then more than that, let's connect them with each other as well. I think building the community would be the next piece of this thing that really kind of cements it into people's psyche. Like, yeah, absolutely. I want to create people. I shouldn't. That's a terrible way of saying that. I want to create people. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you? I, I want to create a community where people feel safe and they can talk about what they're working on. And they're, they're dealing struggles. with like-minded people that are working through the same thing. Yeah. We've already done it. And it's just a great place to hang out on the internet, feel safe, and be able to communicate and BS with people. Sometimes you feel really alone in the things that you're going through. I mean, we have that <laughs> still. Um, but a community like that is great to get with people so you don't feel so alone. And sometimes that is just so helpful in any kind of situation that you're going through. It truly is. Just to know that like, I'm not crazy. Thank God. <laughs> Yeah. I'm pretty sure I was. Right. You know, it's great hearing it from someone else that you're not. 100%. That is actually a great segue into the topic today. Yes. So we've discussed various techniques for creating a strong mindset, for developing growth, for coping with addiction and codependency and working on yourself. And I mean, we've talked about everything, boundaries, um, fitness mindset, like I I'm, go, I'm going through them. I'm, I'm getting stuck now, but I know there's about 40 episodes of really helpful content. Mm -hmm. Something that I did this week because I got derailed uh, last Tuesday, I think. It's been about a week now. I got absolutely derailed by a conversation with somebody. Mm -hmm. Everyone has someone in their life where when you talk to them, it feels like they have sucked your spirit dry. Like you start to question they actually call those energy vampires. There's well, a really interesting well, book Well, I on know that. one. Yeah, right? I know. I'm fully aware. Person, I was derailed as well. <laughs> person absolutely wears me out. Every time I talk to them, it's just, it's emotionally draining. It leaves you questioning your sanity. And could anyone else actually be that crazy? Or maybe am I crazy? See, one of the curses of being so introspective and always questioning your own self and your own motives is that crazy people, toxic people will make you question yourself, but they shouldn't. Yeah, let's not call them crazy. That's not nice. Okay, well, this person, I have the right. <laughs> we've got we've we've got history, and I am sticking by that. Okay. So toxic people may be in your life. This could be anyone in your life. You name it. I'm not going to get specific about who this may be in my life, but everyone has one of these people that will just leave you feeling drained and like you've just lost your way. Yeah. I sat with this for the better part of two days processing everything that was discussed and I had a tough time and I couldn't figure out what was going on in me. I'm usually pretty good at, at, at identifying emotions. I had a lot of practice with the old feelings wheel back in the day. <laughs> so as I'm going through it, I'm like, man, it's almost like depression. It's like this hollow feeling. I feel, I'm not sure if I'm angry or if I'm sad or if I'm just like vengeful. I, I couldn't identify it. I couldn't quite get to the bottom of it. Crazy how but, that happens. But I was definitely off. I knew that that much I was off. And that there would be times where I could kind of get back into my normal state of mind. And then in my quiet moments, I would I would recollect that conversation and I would get off again. Mm -hmm. 
So I spent some time doing something today that we both have done in the past, and it is just an incredible way to process heavy emotions, you know, burdensome conversations, anything that you've gone through, and it's journaling. Yeah. Journaling is an excellent way to clear the mind. It's, it's a powerful tool for processing emotions and, and any kind of problems you may have. It's extremely cathartic as well. Yes. And you don't have to be a strong writer to journal. Nope. I think that... I'm <laughs> yeah, raising my hand. I'm looking at you. So <laughs> self-professed, terrible writer, Paige is. Yes. Uh, this is not coming from me. It's no, just... y'all can tell who writes certain um, Instagram posts and who writes others. Right. <laughs> <laughs> It's You're okay. not as bad as you think. It's all right. I so writing for me has always just been something that came natural. And I've just always been. He's an amazing writer. And one day he will have a book just so. Well, you'll know. I've just I've always enjoyed just pouring thoughts out on paper. I used to write poetry and music when I was really young, like I was a 12, 13 year old kid. Uh, and then I, I learned that I could just sort of write down what was going on in my life and it would help. I, I have this vivid memory of being like probably eight or nine years old and my parents were having problems at the time. And I don't really know what the problems were. I just knew that things weren't great because they were like going through financial statements. And I think they were having financial problems at the time, but it was really scary because I didn't know what was going on and like sort of attuned to their emotions. And it was just, it was tough. I remember sitting down and just writing a letter about how I felt like a letter to myself, like a letter for my feelings mm -hmm. and feeling better afterward. Yeah. It was like my first encounter with journaling and just this cathartic practice it's of powerful. putting your putting your thoughts onto paper. Right. I, th I know for most people that this seems like a total ass whip and no one really wants to mess with it. I don't think it's necessarily that. I think some people go into it not knowing what to write. You don't elaborate. You don't understand that because <laughs> <laughs> no, I want you to explain. Okay, so journaling for me was scary because I'm like I'm I don't know what to write. I might feel a certain way, but how do I put this on paper? And you just don't know how to how to express yourself in that way, right? Yeah. How okay. Are you, how are you not clicking with me? I'm clicking. I'm just <laughs> listening. Jeez. I'm on edge today. You ain't kidding, man. You <laughs> see the looks I'm getting. Freaking dagger eyeballs. Oh, whatever. No, I mean, it really is a thing. A lot of people are intimidating by um, intimidated by writing. Sometimes they may even feel like, oh, what if somebody finds this? What if my child finds this? What if my husband finds this? What if my spouse finds this? Whatever. What if my parents find this? You know, it's kind of scary for people to put it out there. Like keeping a journal. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't there like an unspoken rule that you just don't mess with someone's journal, though? Hmm. Yeah. What was that for? Well, because some people read. Oh, you're not talking about me. No, I'm not talking about you. I got you. Yeah. I was like, what is this about? <laughs> well, that was random that you brought that up oh. because, yeah, it, it, it's I've been betrayed. <laughs> well, I'm going to go through just a handful of benefits to journaling and why we believe in this practice and why we think you should try it, too. So the first thing it does, it provides a safe and private space. It provides a safe and private space to express thoughts and emotions without the fear of judgment. I think that's the best part about it is that like, I wrote a four page long journal today and no one will ever get to read what was in it. I didn't send it to you. No one will ever find it. Mm -hmm. It is between me, the paper and my spirit. That's it. Yeah. No one will ever find it. You don't know that. Well, I don't know. You could come looking for it. You can read it. I don't care. That's fine. But <laughs> I'm not going to look. I don't. The second benefit is that it helps clarify and identify emotions, which is probably my favorite part about it. As I explained, I was having a really tough time even identifying what I was feeling. Yeah. Negative, like positive emotions are pretty easy to identify for me anyway. Yeah. Negative emotions become more difficult because... Sadness can sometimes feel like anger, anger, depending on how you handle anger. Right. If you turn it inward and you get resentful, it's actually a form of anger, but it's really a form of fear. But journaling that. Damn. <laughs> was that just. That just like made my brain short your circuit. <laughs> but in journaling it, I'm able to discover this kind of stuff. Okay. So it helps me identify and clarify emotions. So just. I don't know what I'm feeling. When I put it on paper, it suddenly become like, oh my gosh, I can see it so clearly now. Okay. I can see everything. Yeah. Uh, the next thing it does is, is it facilitates problem solving. Now, I wouldn't say that this is always the goal of journaling though. It's not always to solve a problem. No. Sometimes it's, it's just the action of let me just express how I'm feeling right now in this moment or what I'm working on at the moment. 
with the understanding that it's not going to get solved today. I'm not going to write some prolific statement here that's just going to fix my life. Yeah. It's more about just getting the thoughts it's out. It's like venting. But it can identify something in your psyche that can help you solve a problem. Yeah. You can realize things about yourself because we can only control ourselves, right? We can't control other people. Mm -hmm. We can control ourselves. So when I realize something about myself, I then have the decision to take a different action. So it is sort of a way to problem solve, but really for me, it's just, it's about the cathartic action of just writing this stuff out, just getting it out in the world. Another thing it does, it promotes self-awareness. Um, it increases self-awareness and mindfulness. I like that. Just reflecting on the experiences and emotions, you gain a deeper understanding of yourself and your thought pattern and your behavior patterns, mm -hmm. things that you do over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And that's the last thing I think it's really cool that it does is it provides a record of progress. You can go back and look on past entries mm -hmm. and gain insight into how far you've come. Freaking did that today. What'd you find? I've come a long way and I mean, I'm still kind of complaining about the same things, but you know, it's things that are kind of out of my control, but I am processing them much differently now. It's crazy. I love it. That's cool. You went back and read them. I usually don't go back and read old ones because uh -huh. I'm like, man, I was freaking oh, it's cringy. That day. Sometimes it's cringy. Sometimes I read it and I'm like, oh, did I really write that? But it, it's just years though. It's what's it's, beautiful about that's, it. Yeah. And I know that I'm, I know that that was what I was feeling that day and that's okay. Cringy or not, that was how I was feeling. I put it out on paper and I felt better after I wrote it. So I have a recommendation to anyone that's never journaled and wants to try. They don't consider themselves a strong writer. We all have an inner voice. You know what I'm talking about? Like mm -hmm. the Morgan Freeman that lives in your head that narrates your life. You know what I mean? Sure. We all have an inner voice. You have an inner voice. I have an inner voice. The listeners have an inner voice. Everyone's got this voice. It may not even be your own. I don't know. But that sort of narrates your life and kind of talks to you about what's going on. Yeah. When I write, I, the first thing I sit down and I do is I sort of just let loose. I'm like, well, here I am writing to my journal again. Mm -hmm. I'm very open and just like, it, it may be corny, it may be whatever, but in that opening paragraph, I usually kind of break the ice with myself mm -hmm. and I'm sort of giving myself permission to vent. Yeah. And then I just word vomit. Yeah. So in a four page journal I wrote today, yeah. the first half page was kind of setting it up about how I'm feeling. And then I just, I just let loose and I just vent mm -hmm. for two and a half to three pages. You know what's wild about this? And I'm going to change, I'm not changing the subject, but today we, this is when Matt and I are kind of connected on the same brain, we brain waves or brain links, whatever, wavelengths or whatever, is that when we were texting each other, I was journaling and you were journaling at the same time. That's wild. Right? Really? Yeah. Yeah. But I also do a video journal. So that's something that I wanted to talk about too, whenever you wanted to get past this, but we were doing it at the same time. Which video is journal sounds way more exciting. I'll, I'll get through this. And I want to hear about that. What? Video journal. So hang on, let me get through oh, this okay. real quick. I was like, I didn't so, know what you were saying. Okay. I so, told y'all I'm on fire today. So as I am writing out and I'm venting about this, this interaction that I had with this person, I'm talking about how it really, like, how did this hurt me? Why am I hurt? What did this affect? Was it my self-esteem? Was it my ego? Was it my uh, financial security? Was it, you know, my sex life? Like what was affected? And so I'm checking all the boxes of my personality for what was affected. Mm -hmm. And then, so for me in this instance, I'll just be honest. I've struggled with self-worth basically my entire life. Yeah, you have. Feeling like I'm enough, feeling like I belong, feeling like an imposter a lot of the time. And this conversation spurred a lot of that in me. I'm like, here we go again. I'm right back down to square one where I have nothing to offer anybody and I'm just a loon, yeah. you know? And that's, that's how this conversation almost always goes with this person. I shouldn't say always, but just about all the time, like 99% of the time. Right. Super difficult for me to process because it takes me right back down to that, like that, that basal level yep. of just, I'm just not good enough. And I've been reminded of it again. And right when you were getting to where you were really feeling your self worth, like it just you get kicked out. Yeah, I was I was on a I was on a high. On I was high. feeling I was feeling really good about the things we were doing, and then it's like kick right back down. I'm like, oh man, here we go again. So I decided to take a different action because if there's one thing I learned, and if you hear anything on this episode, 
It's that you cannot think yourself into right acting. You can't think yourself into right acting. You have to act yourself into right thinking. Yep. If we try to think ourselves into right acting, what we will come to find is that you can think yourself in circles and get back to the same spot. You can walk through the forest and all of a sudden it's like, hey, didn't we already pass this tree? You, you just, you, it, your, your thoughts aren't clear. Your thoughts just aren't as clear. But when you take an action, what follows is positive thought. 100% of the time, that's been my experience. Yeah. Where when I'm off, if I take an action to get myself out of it, I feel and I think better. Yes. When I have been weird and wonky and I try to think myself out of it, sometimes I'm able to give myself some pretty coherent thoughts and put myself back on track. But a lot of times it's just not quite enough. Yeah. I have to really take an action. So as I'm going through this thing, I'm kind of processing what was said, how it made me feel. And then at the end of it, this is where I get really fired up again. And I'm like, you know what? Everything is bullshit. All of that <laughs> was complete BS. Right. Not one bit of that applies to me or my life or the things that I've done. No. Uh, we listened to a podcast this last week. Uh, it was Chris Williamson's podcast. And he had a guy named Alex Hormozy on. Yeah. And he had this awesome quote. And it's about self-affirmations. We've all been told, you know, speak positive self-affirmations to yourself every morning. Uh, write them on the mirror. Um, yeah. Tell yourself that you're, you know, this, that, or the other. Yeah. And I've kind of always felt weird about that, but he put it in a way that he articulated it so well. And I, I agree with him completely. I think that self-affirmations are BS mm -hmm. in so many ways. Self-confidence doesn't come from shouting affirmations in the mirror. Right. Self-confidence comes from having a stack of undeniable proof that you are who you say you are. You have to outwork your self-doubt. Yeah. So what I did in that moment as I'm looking at who this person said I was, I wrote down 25 things that proved to me and anyone who knows me that I am who I say I am. Ugh. Oh. That gives me chills. There's 25 things there. As this person That's a said lot. that you're not X, I'd be like BS. And here's why. Mm -hmm. Here's what I've done. Here are the 20. And I, I could have made a hundred, but I listed 25 things. And what it really did for me was it gave me the self-confidence back. It gave me my power back as I'm looking at I am who I say I am. Right. And that's just for you. You're not having to put that into the world and prove it to no, anybody else. No, I'm not. It's literally for you to look at it in your face to say, you know what? I am this. That's, I think that's powerful that nobody else has to say that to you, that you wrote it down in your own words and you were able to, to acknowledge that. I think that's beautiful. It was powerful and I felt so much better afterward. And before we get to the video journal, which I think is sick, there's, <laughs> I, I just had, Literally. This, <laughs> I, I just had this thought about, um, self affirmations and, and confidence and all of that. So I've struggled with self-worth um, for reasons that we will talk about in a later episode that's going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been something I've, I've struggled with for as long as I can remember. From, from consciousness, I've struggled with this. And there are some people in your life that will make this worse. Um, we've got a really awesome episode on boundaries that discusses what to do about some of these people. Um, we've got tons and tons of posts and videos out there and you can reach out to us if you're struggling with it. I'm just going to speak on mine specifically here. Um, but if you're struggling with who you want to be and not feeling like you're there yet, part of the reason might be about what I, from what I just described, which is confidence doesn't come from self affirmations. It comes from having evidence and proof that you are who you say you are. Mm -hmm. So for me, if I want to be who I am, I can look back. Like, let's say that I wanted to be, I don't know, um, a very successful entrepreneur. I want to start a company that's worth $100 million and help billions of people around the world. Like, okay, I, there's no self-affirmation in the world that I could scream to myself that would make that true. Mm -hmm. But if I look at my stack of undeniable proof, I am well on my way. Yeah. So let's say that your goal is to be fit. You want to be fit and shredded on the cover of men's health. You're sitting there thinking, well, I'm nowhere close to that yet, but you are. Yeah. Start writing this stuff down. What did you do this morning? I got up at four in the morning. 
I'd got my water in. I got some black coffee in my system. I got my workout in. My meals are prepped. My meals are prepped. I'm ready to go. You've got a stack of proof that you're building right now that you are going to be that person. Boom. But it requires action. So yeah. maybe you don't have all the big stuff yet, but what are the little things that you've done up to this point? Yeah. And that stuff matters too. Yes, it does. That stuff matters too. Yes, it does. So as I'm going through my list, I'm, so I go through my list of 25 things. And then the last paragraph is something along the lines of, I will not let this person steal my joy again yeah or lest i have to write another journal about it because mm -hmm. it's the same thing every single time yeah it is tear me down i'm gonna build myself back up and i'm moving on yeah but i got so derailed with this thing i mean it took me almost a week to get through it yeah and it's like man yeah yeah don't take those phone yeah. calls that's yeah. my advice yeah. first of all <laughs> yeah <laughs> let I mean, those go to voicemail it, it derailed me as well because you're my best friend and i don't like that i don't like you to be treated that way but um can I talk about what I did? I was waiting. Yeah. Okay. Go. So I decided to, um, I was feeling really off and wonky and I just wanted to get stuff off my chest and I, and Matt knows how I feel, but sometimes I want the world to know how I feel, but I'm just, I can't discuss this to the world. So what I do is I get my phone and I video myself about how I feel about the situation and it really just, and then I would listen to it over and over again to be like, okay, okay. And it like, it was just a relief. It was only like a minute long, but it was just a relief to hear it, to see it, to be my vulnerable self in a video. And then I know it sounds weird. Is that weird? No, I don't think it's weird. I, I think as a content creator, it's also a great way for you to practice being in front of the camera. Well, I think so that too. Serves like, I think that serves two purposes. That's probably what gave me the idea is because TikTok is full of just, you know, weird shit. You know, there's some toxic crap out there that you can listen to. But sometimes I do like to get on and I'm like, okay, I've got something to say. And it did give me some practice in that, you know, area, but it also just made me feel, feel better about what I was going through. For some people... As you're saying this, I'm like, what other ways have we done this in the past? There are different ways that people can get this through to them. Like some people, they write poetry. Some people write music. Mm -hmm. Sometimes playing a guitar is a way of... Ooh. Ooh. Do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a habit that I do. <laughs> it's my favorite. Excited page. Okay. Okay. So Ooh. Um, Ooh. Um, typing out a letter or an email to somebody who might be, you know, upsetting you or who you feel has done you wrong, but not sending it, right? Have we talked about this yet? I don't know if I, you, you talked about it to somebody. I don't remember what I talked happened. To, okay. So I gave a speech last week at an, at an executives was. group. And yes. this is, oh, it was about communication. Right. Which is like my favorite topics ever. Yeah. Okay. So quick detour on this. You're right. This is a, a so. But I do it too. This is, do you really? <laughs> yes. You do the same thing. I have drafts. That's wonderful. So I, uh, I used to get, my mouth has gotten me in more trouble than <laughs> you think anyone. Like I can be sitting there. I was just like, we, we sent this meme to each other earlier, like sitting there listening to someone who, you know, is just like out of their mind and they're just talking nonsense. I'm the first person on your messaging. It took you a while to find well, me you're, there. You're pinned on there. So <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> I don't want to, it's, it's got some super colorful language here, but anyway, it's basically your brain talking to you saying, just, just let it go. Let it go. Let just it go. Chill. It's not worth it. No. Don't say mm -mm. anything. Don't nope. say anything. Before I know it, my mouth is like, now listen here. First of all. Yeah. <laughs> like before I can even help myself, like my brain's saying like, dude, just let it go. It's not a big deal. And so with, it's just with some people I will do this. And I'm just like, yeah, I just, you get triggered by some things. They steal, they steal my my peace and my power. And I'm just, I'm off to the races. I'm not perfect. Right. So this got me in a lot of trouble early on in my career where I was having to make amends to people like on a daily basis right? for emails that I would send like scathing emails because I was super sensitive and I was reading between the lines and I was hurt and hurt people hurt people. Right. So uh -huh. I'm reading between the lines of their emails and I'm like, they might've just said, um, you know, like the, the big one that people really pisses people off is per my last email, which basically means that's like white collar speech for like, did you, can you not effing read? Right. I sent that earlier. Yeah. It was something along those lines, you know, where I had just missed the email. But what I hear is what I'm reading and I'm, I'm interpreting is that I'm stupid like you're an idiot. and I'm an idiot. And so like I fired back something like cruel, like <laughs> out of place, like completely uncalled for. Right. Like I should just 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 hold your L. And just take it. You it's not let that the big world, of a deal. You're supposed to let the world revolve. A few yeah. Times. So I heard a guy say something to the effect one time was like, man, I just let the world spin a couple times before I respond now. I'm like, hmm, let me try that. So 
I started doing this thing where anytime I was riled up or worked up, I would identify that almost immediately. And I would go to an email. I'd start a new email. I would make it out to the person, subject, put it all in there. And I would write the email that I, everything I wanted to say to this person. And then I would click the X button and it would say, do you want to delete the message or save it in drafts? Mm -hmm. I would save it in my drafts. Yeah. About an hour later, I go back to the email oh, you're like, and oh, I'm like, nope. damn, I'm glad I didn't send that. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And so then I start to edit and I'm like, okay, I'm clear, more clear minded now. And, and I can send this, but in the early, early days, I would have to edit an email two or three times, sometimes over the course of a day or two before I would actually send this thing. Yeah. Because I was so worked up and like I was just so far off base from communicating on a normal scale with anybody. I was just so offended by everything. Yeah. So sensitive. So the drafts trick is what I teach now. It's like just put it in your drafts and let it sit there for a while. Come back to it in an hour with a clear mind and then reply. Yeah. Give people your best, not your anger. You know, give them your the, the best version of you, which is not usually the angry version of you. Right. But sometimes it just feels good to put it out there on paper. It does. It's another way of journaling. Because you're really. like, I'm, I'm not. I this is how I feel, but I'm not going to let you know how I feel because I know it's not going to get anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> and I used to be a victim of feeling like I had to respond immediately. Yeah. And you don't have to no, do that you either. Do not. I, I don't respond immediately most of the time. If if at all, I would say, <laughs> you're like. <laughs> I like to keep you on your toes. <laughs> My God, man. Uh, with emails, I used to be really bad about that. I was replying to emails all day, all night, immediately. Now, if you email me after 5 or 6 p.m., you're probably not going to get a reply to me until the next day unless it's urgent. Right. Ooh. Um, and what I wanted to say about journaling, too, uh, is that we use very basic journals. Yeah, there's not nothing Like, crazy. we don't use the ones that have, like, an activity book is kind of what I think of. Yeah. Because typically when people get those, they're like, oh, I'm so excited to use these. And then it gets overwhelming because there's almost too much crap that you're supposed to fill out and have these random feelings whenever I feel like if it's just blank or just lines, you can really get more creative and just let loose and word vomit, as you say. We should probably do a video on effective journaling techniques. Okay. And put that out there for people. Yeah. I think that could be helpful. So be on the lookout for that. I think that... That's something that could Did really you just help come a up lot with of people. That? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, why not? I mean, I'm just sitting here thinking about it, like, we know how. If someone doesn't, let's show them. Right. We've been doing this forever. Yeah. It's it's a great way to process emotions. And in my case, it was a great way to remind myself that I have a stack of undeniable proof that I am who I say I am. Agreed. And I don't need validation from especially from this person, but really from anybody. From anybody. And so mm -hmm. as I'm going through it, I, I realize this, but it was it was free. It didn't cost me a dime to sit there. And I did it on the computer, Microsoft Word. Yeah. And just, just went after typing it. Typing away, man. Yeah. Sent the, then I stuck it in my recycling bin and I deleted it. Some of them I might keep around, but that was on an office server. So right. I don't want it on the office no. server. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just get rid of that, right? Yeah. That's yeah, smart. I don't want anyone coming up with that thing. Uh, but I think this is, I, I, I hope this has been helpful. I think this is the best um, explanation of why we believe in journaling and in a really good way we think anyone who's going through something to be able to process stuff mm -hmm. I mean we, we hear from so many of you guys where you're you're dealing with heavy stuff and we can't thank you enough for for trusting us and sharing the stuff with us yeah like this is this is exactly what we dreamed like our wildest dreams was like I mean we could help people what if they trusted us enough to speak to us about this kind of stuff yeah and we hear from so many listeners and people that follow us on social media that are reaching out to us about things that they're going through. We may not always have the the perfect answer, no. but we're always going to be able to put you in the right direction yeah. without a doubt. Yeah. And for, in some cases, it might be like, yeah, I, I got a perfect answer for that. Some things are really complicated. They're more complex. And there's really not ever a correct answer for some of that stuff. 100%. You can sit with a therapist for 10 years and they're never going to give you the answer. Yeah. You kind of have to figure this stuff out for yourself. Exactly. So I hope it's, if you've ever reached out, hope it's not too general. Hope that it's been helpful to you. And I hope that this episode, is, if it's done anything at all, it's opened up uh, a new coping skill for you. It's unlocked a new one. Yes. One more thing that I completely forgot to discuss about journaling. What's up? Reflections at the end of the day. Oh, yeah. 
We both do this. Because I ended up putting this in a guide because a very lovely person that I've been speaking with had given me the idea and you had told it to me as well, is writing down at the end of the day, like what have you done great, but also where can you work? And look at that as an opportunity to grow instead of beating yourself up over what you messed up on. Absolutely. So I I actually put a guide that puts everything on there and it looks so good. It's so pretty. I liked it. I started doing this a decade ago. And for me, it was, it's actually part of the work they gave me when I was in treatment and it's, uh, in AA, they call it a 10th step basically. And it's inventory. It's continuing to take personal inventory. When you were wrong, you admit it. Right. A, A way to summarize that for those of you who are an alcoholic, you're just someone who's like, I'm just trying to get better. How do I do that? So at the, at the end of the day, I kind of go through my day and I think about all the interactions I had, especially those that kind of arise some sort of emotion in me. Yeah. Like, was I cruel to that person? Like, was right. I, was I out of line right. or man, why didn't I stand up and say something when I knew I should have? Was I afraid? Yeah. Was I being selfish today? Was I dishonest? Yes. So I go through this catalog of categories and if I'm wrong, I make amends for it. Mm-hmm. If it's to someone else, right? Like, yeah. like there was, a, I think I might have mentioned on a previous episode where there was an employee, a, a newer guy that we hired, and I jumped on him about leaving the office at a certain time. I can't remember exactly what it was, but without realizing it, I didn't know that he had already spoken to someone and he'd gotten this okayed. Right, right. And so I jumped on him without realizing this and then come to find out like he had gotten this cleared and he was not rude to me when I told him you need to do X, Y, Z. He was very much like, yes, sir. I'm sorry about that. And so when I found out that he had had this cleared, it broke my heart. And I was like, I was, that was wrong. Right. You were wrong. So I, you admitted it. I admitted it to you him. You corrected it. Apologized, made amends. And that's kind of what the daily inventory is about. It was yeah. in the evening, you sit down, you go through your day and it's like, where was I off today? What could I have done better today? But you're right. You right. do not drift into like this morbid reflection no. over, I screwed up again. Nope. Because I'll tell you what. You're going to keep doing it yeah, worse. <laughs> almost 4,000 days now and I don't have a perfect day yet. Right, right. It's a good way to look at like your cognitive distortions as well and where you have, where did you do all or nothing thinking? You know, where did you, where were your perfectionists? Look at these as challenges and opportunities to actually do better tomorrow. And Matt does this. He doesn't write this stuff down anymore. I used he kinda to, does yeah. it in his Do it in head. My mind now. But for me, I'm actually going to start doing this because I think it'll help me bump up the growth a little bit more. And I'm going to recommend others do this as well because I think it is a beautiful practice to hold you accountable. Without a doubt, especially when you're writing it out because you will start to see patterns. Yes. It's like, man, I keep jumping on people for no reason. Let me really explore why I do that. Right. And then, just take 10 minutes at yeah. the night, at night in your room. It doesn't even take be quiet. that sometimes. Right, right. Just in a quiet area and just reflect on your day, write it out be, and see where you can do better tomorrow. And be totally honest with yourself and please non-judgmental with yourself. 100%. It is okay that you've made a mistake. Like I said, I've been doing this for a decade and I've still yet to have a perfect day where I just did everything perfect. Yeah. There's always something I could have done better. And when I think about it, I also think about, look how much you did right. Yeah. And I take those couple of things that I need to improve on and I, I make, I move on them. I make action. I take action and I move on them Mm -hmm. and it it helps you grow. It keeps you accountable. If it does anything at all, you're right. The accountability part's huge. So after you journal, yeah, add that to your evening routine. It's great. Right before bed, as you're sitting there, when I'm sitting there, I'm kind of looking at the TV, but I'm not listening or paying attention. I'm just kind of going through it in my mind and I'm thinking about it. And then I will, I use Siri for like everything. She's my personal assistant. She's your bitch. So I tell Siri, hey, remind me to send so-and-so a message in the morning. If I owe someone an amends and I'll get them on the phone or get them in my office face-to-face. If it's something like I could have, (laughs) I could have held myself in higher regard and not let myself get so down over a stupid conversation, I can have a reminder for that too. I use that reminders app for everything. Yep. That thing is full of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's excellent. I love it. It's my favorite. So anyway, we hope this was helpful. We hope that this has been uh, a learning experience for anyone that's struggled with, I need to get this stuff off my chest. I'm not sure I really want to tell anyone about it. I don't want to bother anyone with it. You don't have to. Yeah. You can just journal it. Yeah. And if you have any questions about it, please reach out. Yes. And we will get a video out there on journaling, yep. journaling, te- journaling techniques, ways to go about it. Um, 
yeah, it, I think that could be really helpful for people. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So as we mentioned, we are still building out this community, which is almost complete. We are revamping a website. We've got some really fun and exciting things coming. Yes. It's going to be awesome. It's coming to life. It's coming to fruition. And for those of you that What'd have you just say? Fruition. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> She's giving me a look like that's not a word. No. But I'm also like, not sure. Like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> it is coming to be. It is becoming a reality. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to write fruition. that in my journal. Yay. <laughs> So anyway, this is this this vision, this dream of ours is, is coming to fruition and it's it's happening and it's so exciting. And for those of you that have been with us from the beginning, I cannot thank you enough. I cannot tell you how much it means to us when you reach out, when you like a post, when you share something, when you tell us that you've got something from it. Like it gives me goosebumps. And if I've ever seemed like weird when you tell me this stuff, I just don't know how to act yeah. because I'm so beside <laughs> myself that like holy crap, like they're, they're getting something from this. Like it's working. I just can't believe it. And it makes me so happy to see people progressing off of something that we built Yep. and taking what was once our darkest moments and making it into something useful. Yeah. Like truly. And it's just been amazing. So thank you. Truly. I cannot thank you enough for everyone that has been with us, especially the day oneers that yeah. are out there and like listen to every episode. And they, yeah. they binge them and they go through them and then they, they hit us up and tell us they love them. Like, that just makes my day when I get those. Yeah, that me is too. the coolest feeling in the world. It's awesome. Okay, so if you haven't already, at the beginning of the show, we asked you to please follow the show. And our website is www.twfocouple.com. You didn't say that before. Twfocouple.com. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was just really quick. I want to make sure that everyone gets it. They don't have to rewind it. <laughs> 15 seconds and go back on the podcast <laughs> app. So anyway, uh, on Apple, it is top right hand corner. Apple podcast. There's a little plus symbol. Click there. Leave us a review. It'd be very much appreciated on Spotify. It's on the left side underneath the photo, like the cover art album art. Uh, leave us a review there. It'd go a long way. I would very much appreciate it. I'd be forever grateful to you. If you could do that for us. Uh, I think that's all we've got, right? Yeah. Awesome. Well, until next time, I'm Matt I'm Paige. and we'll see you. Bye.